Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next video. And this one is kind of a war recap, I guess, of the Immoral Thieves versus Mariana Trench War. Uh, took place a number of days ago. I just was able to get these attacks recorded, actually. Uh, they should be going away very soon. But uh, it was a great war, a random matchup, like I said in that last video with the Town Hall 11 attack. This was a random matchup, even though they are facing each other in the CWL war that's taking place as we speak. It's already started on prep day, I think. So kind of a weird situation how that worked out, but I guess they got to... Uh, not really test each other's bases, because I'm sure they all put up different bases than they actually wanted to use, but they got to just get a feel for each other, and in this kind of practice round, I guess you could call it, um, Immoral Thieves got the win here by six stars, so a very comfortable margin there. Uh, you can see the difference was the Town Hall 10s mainly. Uh, Mariana Trench left quite a few of those on the board, whereas Immoral Thieves had a Town Hall 11 3-star, which we saw in the last video I uploaded, and then I think this is a Town Hall 10, uh, yeah, and just more Town Hall 10 3-stars mainly was what, uh, what won them the war, so good job to both clans, and I think it should be exciting to see the, uh, the outcome of the uh, the CWL war that's going on right now between them. I'll do my best to cover that war as well because uh, we do have a CWL light war in Genesis that we have to uh, to take a look at too. So um, let's take a look at a few of the attacks here and we're doing a balance of Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 9. There were so many awesome attacks I wish I could show them all but um, I'm only going to show I guess what I have, five attacks. Yeah five attacks for this video so I have to limit them a little bit but I'm going to show kind of the ones that stood out to me at least in my quick uh, scouting of the attacks that went, took place. Uh, one thing I like is that bowler. It's just it's not a huge deal, but just dropping down that bowler, it's planned out. So the second bounce takes out that mortar. I mean, it's not a huge deal. The mortar's not a big value defense, but it's something. Um, it creates the funnel very nicely. So drop those bowlers with purpose. I mean, think about what their second bounce is going to hit because you have the luxury of when you're dropping them directly, you get to be able to to see exactly where that second bounce is gonna go. And if you do it right, you can get some good value from that second bounce. So it comes in with that freeze there for the first Inferno. Um, he's doing a baby dragon attack, so he needs to get a few of these air defenses taken out. In the CC, there's a um, balloon and a dragon, which go down relatively quickly. The queen takes out that Inferno. The king's a little bit off to the side there, but he's already starting to sprinkle in these baby dragons. You can see the bowlers are starting to access the, uh, the core, which gives them, uh, I think they can target pretty much every air defense in there. The queen takes out that final one. Just the Inferno is really the main threat that's left up at this point. But the queen looks like she will go down right here. But uh, the baby dragons, you know, at level four, they have quite a bit of hit points. They can fend for themselves a little bit. The golem doing a little bit of tanking there. And uh, his king actually is still up. Uh, the, the king's ability definitely helped there. And uh, yeah, this base is pretty much toast. Not by a lot, but uh, he has enough to get the job done right here as his troops kind of converge towards this Inferno Tower. A few Seeking Air Mines actually, which can be costly, but luckily for him, those Golemites are going to take out that Archer Tower, um, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, actually, look like the Archer Tower is still up, barely. We'll go ahead and fast forward though. Uh, the Baby Dragon takes out those last two defenses. Got pretty close, but um, got the job done. Nice attack to, was that Vicious? Yeah, Vicious. All right, going down two here, and we had to skip one other baby dragon attack just for sake of diversity. There was another good one, um, but I'm not going to be showing that. Let's take a look at the uh, this witch attack, witch bowler combination. This is kind of a weird base to be honest, but uh, I think this was the right strategy for the base. And it's you can see how he's doing it. He's starting in with the witches and the bowlers kind of on each side, really making sure that funnel is nice and wide. Uh, doesn't want his bowlers straying once he drops the main group. And that's pretty much all he has. He doesn't have any hogs, balloons, nothing really defense targeting. There's the CC bowlers, the heroes. Luckily for him, those witches look like they're going to reroute back inside the base, or at least uh, actually not many of them. The witches, for the most part, go to the outside, but they actually do okay on the outside. They can kind of help uh, take out those flanking defenses. Uh, so everything's moving through and the core has two jumps for them it looks like to connect the infernos and everything and uh, good freeze there on that other inferno gets that taken out um, while it's frozen and just making his way through uh, the bowlers were able to target the infernos on both sides basically just a stormed right through the core of the base and like I said those witches actually um, they're able to to do a pretty solid job on the outside of the base there 
because they can spawn skeletons quick enough that the uh, defenses defenses typically won't target them. Plus, with the uh, the new and improved uh, amount of HP they have, it takes you know multiple shots from a point defense to take it out, which sometimes gives them enough time to retaliate and take the uh, the defensive tower out before it gets them. So right here, things are kind of petering out. Looks like that wizard tower took out the witches at the top of the base, but his queen still has her ability, and a few witches are still going strong there. I think that bomb almost takes those witches out, got really close there. Actually pretty lucky, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and fast forward, because um, once again, a bit of a close attack, but gets the job done. Uh, so nice stuff to, uh, to Mighty Buzzard. Let's take a look at one more Town Hall 10, then we'll take a look at a couple Town Hall 9 attacks. Uh, number 14 here. This is Bobby and probably more of a traditional type of attack we see. These bases, and I gotta say, these bases that have the nice little air defenses and then in the positions where you want them, they're becoming more and more rare. We either see bases like the one I showed a few uh, a few days ago with the air defenses on one side, like the no-fly zone design, or we see the air defenses just on the outside of the base. They're still you know, in four corners, but they're right on the outside there to prevent the Lava Hound from getting deep into the base and tanking. Uh, by the way, at, while I mentioned the no-fly zone, some um, another YouTuber actually did uh, an attack on my no-fly zone. He uh, had someone make the base and he tried out a few attacks on it and actually was very successful. So uh, the YouTube channel name is Cast and Blast. I should give him a more official shout out probably, but just if you're watching this, Cast and Blast uh, has a very interesting video if you want to see more of my base in uh, defensive replays because he actually was successful in three-starring it on a number of attacks so check that out I guess <laughs> I should probably give him a better plug than this but um, just while I was thinking of it might as well say it anyway though uh, the kill squad coming in I like the heal on the bowlers if you don't have any healers I mean remember back we used to use healers like you know four or five six healers in those mass bowler attacks um, now those giant bombs, there's nothing to heal them back up from those. So you got to keep that in mind, especially when you're going through a big part of the base. You can see right here alone, there's two giant bombs in that compartment. So you got to have something to heal those bowlers up. And the heal spell does a great job there, especially once the inferno's down. Uh, you can uh, heal up those boulders without them being blocked by the inferno. So here comes the, uh, the lava hounds, the balloons. Like I said, you typically don't get this nice. Uh, air defense placement, these nice little anchors for your lava hounds to hang out at. Um, it's a little bit trickier usually, but uh, Bobby does a good job taking advantage of this base, gets the job done, that last air defense, and I think his queen might go down to those cannons, but the balloons will be enough to finish off the base along with a few cleanup troops. So uh, let's fast forward and take a look at a few Town Hall 9 attacks. Have some very interesting uh, attack strategies. I couldn't show a lot, so I thought I'd show some of the more interesting ones a little bit different than what we typically see. Uh, we have Raj coming in here, and look at that, 39 balloons. Town Hall 9, and I, I, I talked about this before, I don't want to give my opinions too much, I just want to save it all for a video to talk about the state of the game, but I will say that Town Hall 9 is in some trouble. It's you know, getting a little bit close to being too easy. And as I, th I say this, I think Genesis is actually struggling with some of the Town Hall 9s in our CWL war. So it's it's circumstantial. Like sometimes it looks like, oh, it's really easy. Other times I've seen uh, our clan and other clans struggle. So I think it just, uh, some of it depends just on luck, the quality of the bases, other factors as well. But in general, especially if you look at this attack, I think it's uh, it's getting to be a little bit too easy for Town Hall 9. I think there should be a little more balance added uh, to make it stronger defensive-wise. Basically, Raj comes in here, does a hero trade, gets that queen taken out, a few other defenses, then just has one Lava Hound and a huge wall of balloons. Uh, all of those balloons are down right there. I love how that huge group of like 12... 15, I don't know, like 16 balloons all goes to that one mortar. Kind of weird how they clumped up like that, but that's just the pathing of them. Um, so he has two heals and a bunch of haste. He's basically just going to propel these balloons straight through the base. The Lava Hound popped long ago, so his balloons are being directly targeted, and he's going into both air sweepers 
but the haste keep them moving and the heal do enough to uh, to heal up the groups. I mean, the air defenses will take them out one by one, but it still takes, you know, a significant amount of time to get through those balloons, especially when you have like 40 of them or however many he had. So look at those balloons running away from the traps there with the haste spell. Um, as the skellies will be a bit of a nuisance, especially, um, and also the lava hound too. So two different uh, forces in the air to watch out for. But he has so many balloons that just won't, they just refuse to go down really. They have to go all the way into the corner for this troll Tesla. And uh, you can see the balloons just being milked down by the uh, by the pups and the skeletons. It's pretty crazy actually, but right there they go down. Uh, the balloons still can't defend themselves. They can't target any air stuff, but what they can do is kind of go towards that minion to try to get it to help them out. Um, but the, the rest of the troops are doing an okay job. We'll have to fast forward here. Basically, it's just about these balloons slowly dying, but being able to get the job done up top at least. Right there, actually barely gets the, uh, the last building taken out in time, I believe. Let's take a look at that. What was it? Yeah, it was pretty close, I think, about 12 seconds-ish, so uh, definitely in the ball pop, ballpark of being close. Uh, let's take a look at number 23 here. We have, I think, a dragon attack. Yeah, Happy the Sad, kind of an interesting name here. But uh, just taking what this base is giving, uh, the two air defenses just right there. And this probably works, works better at Town Hall 10. But at Town Hall 9 Dragons, I think relative to the to the DPS, to the kind of overall strength of the base, dragons are stronger at Town Hall 9 than they are at Town Hall 10. Uh, you can have the level, I think, 5 dragons at Town Hall 10, and you only have level 4 at Town Hall 9. But you have two levels higher archer towers. You have a level higher expo. You have new defenses. There's so many more things uh, defensive-wise to hurt those dragons at Town Hall 10. I think the stronger place to use them right now is Town Hall 9. Though that being said, they aren't very popular at either Town Hall level, really. Once again, another Lava Hound in the CC. I guess that was a pretty popular uh, thing to bring for the Town Hall 9s in Mariana Trench. Maybe it, just to throw people off for the CWL war this weekend. Um, but I think this was a pretty serious war. Like both clans were still trying to win from what I know. Like it wasn't like we're going to throw out some troll bases. Both clans were taking this seriously. I think they were, you know, doing their best given a, a weak war. This wasn't during the weekend. This was kind of early in the week. So they still had to kind of adjust to that. But from what I heard, this was a pretty serious war. So anyway, uh, we have the balloons. They came in for that last air defense. He basically just dropped a lava hound on it. And the balloons, it was pretty much the second building they targeted with the uh, air defenses. So got those guys taken out real quick. And things start to peter out a little bit here. But the dragons take out the expo. And the dragons up top kind of converge in the same place. So everything goes down. Has that last haste to swag pretty much. Just a gold storage. Awesome attack to happy the sad. Getting the job done in this base. That'll do it for this recap. Hope you guys liked it. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Sectatron out.